Hey, I'm Philip. I'm an editorial fellow here at Outside Magazine, and with winter almost here, I'm going to talk you through storing your summer gear so that it doesn't get destroyed. So we're going to start with the tent. First of all, you're going to take it and set it up so that you can shake out any forest bits that have accumulated inside and wash down any sap or dirt that might have gotten caked on the outside. Then you're going to leave it somewhere out of the sun to let it dry. Once it's dry, you're gonna take it down and then you're not going to put it back in its stuff sack like this. You're going to take it and just like lay it out um, as open as you can get it. And then take your tent poles. You'll wanna leave them as unfolded as you can possibly do to minimize stress on the shock cord. And you're going to take them, you're gonna set them somewhere cool and dry and out of the way of animals, like the back of a closet. Um, if you're low on space, you can take this whole package and roll it loosely, or if you really need to, you can fold it loosely and hang it over a clothes hanger. The key is you don't want to leave any hard creases in the material. That's where weak spots will develop over the winter and make your tent more likely to rip next year when you take it out. So next we're going to talk about your sleeping pad. This is going to look really similar to the tent with one little addition. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is again, wash it down with soapy water just to get rid of any bug spray, um, dirt, or oils from your skin that might be on it. Then you're gonna let it dry again out of the sun. The other thing that can damage a sleeping pad is moisture stuck inside of it from you blowing into it over the course of a season. So before you put it away for the winter, you're gonna to wanna to get all of the air out of it and then inflate it a couple times with something like a pump or a hair dryer that isn't going to blow a lot of wet air into it. Um, once you've done that, you're gonna inflate it about a quarter of the way, again with a pump or something along those lines. I'm just gonna use me here. And then you're gonna leave the valve open so that there's a little bit of airflow. Again, you want to leave it as unrolled as possible, like the tent, you're trying to prevent any creases in it. But again, if you're low on space, you can leave it really loosely rolled up over the winter. So next we're going to talk about the sleeping bag. Because you've been sleeping in this thing all summer, you're definitely going to want to wash it before you put it away for the winter. And you can do that cold in a front-loading washing machine as long as you use down or synthetic wash, which you can find in basically any outdoor store. Um, and then to dry it, again, you can use a dryer as long as it's front-loading uh, front and unheated. You're going to want to put a tennis ball in there with the sleeping bag, which will sort of beat it over the course of the dry cycle and restore its loft. Once it's dried out, you're gonna store it loosely. So a lot of sleeping bags come with a storage sack like this, um, or you can use a king-sized pillowcase or a laundry bag. You can also, if you have room, hang it somewhere in a closet. The key is that you don't wanna compress it in its stuff sack over the winter. That's gonna scrunch down the insulation, um, which will make it colder for you the following summer. So next we're gonna talk about hydration bladders. Again, your enemy here in storing these is moisture. And so before you put it away, obviously you're gonna to wanna to take all of the water out of it that you can. And then, you're going to want to hang it up so that it can dry out over the winter, which is why I have this coat hanger. Um, to make one of these, you basically take a coat hanger and cut it roughly in half, um, and then it becomes a really simple little holder like this. Um, this allows a little bit of airflow, stops the buildup of mold and mildew. The other thing you can do to slow the growth of mold and mildew is put the bladder in the freezer, um, or if you start to get a buildup of something nasty in there, you can take a gallon of hot water and a teaspoon of bleach and wash out the inside of your bladder using that. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about watercraft. So like a lot of the other things we've been talking about, the first thing you wanna do is set this up all the way and let it dry. But it's really important with inflatable boats to let them do this out of the sun. Um, direct sunlight can actually break down the PVC in the outside, 
which weakens them for the long term. Um, once it's all the way dry, you're going to take it out and leave it about a quarter of the way inflated. It's actually really important that you do this. There's no good space saving mechanism here because leaving your watercraft folded up and uninflated puts a ton of stress on the seams along the edges, which makes it much more likely to fail next year. If you leave it partially inflated, it should last you for a decade. So that's the basics of storing your summer gear over the winter. Thanks for watching.